This is Andre from Team Wayfinder, and today we're interviewing Xanthi Huin, the voice of Fiyumi from Bloodlad, Falcom from Hyperdimension Neptuna, and from the mega popular series Sword Art Online. Sachi. Xanthi, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. All right. Mm-hmm. So, first question How did you get into voice acting? Um, well, in like. Going all the way back, um, in middle school, I was put into an elective wheel that changed electives every quarter. And one of those classes was a beginning theater class. And I'm actually very uh, naturally very shy. And I thought that being on stage would be really scary. And, you know, it, it, I admit it's kind of scary knowing that people are watching you and judging you. But I found being on stage to be very freeing because it was a way that I could use to you know, express different emotions of all these different characters and stories and arouse interests and emotions in others. And so I found it as a really great way to connect with other people and other people in my class. And so, um, you know, once you understand that the audience really just wants to be entertained and that they didn't come with the specific intention of picking you apart, it becomes really fun for you and for whoever's watching. And so from there on, I continue taking theater classes through high school and college. And, you know, I'd seen a lot of like behind the scenes videos where you see the voice actors doing voices of characters like um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas as like Simba or something. But in my mind, I always felt like it was a job for like the chosen few and that it would be like impossible to get in because it was it was always like videos of all these stars being in, in all these like. Um, different animations and um, I mean it's I mean it's hard to get into any medium of acting but you know for me I just never saw it as like a real job but sometime in college as I was watching an anime I thought like this one particular character's voice was really irritating and jarring with the rest of the cast so I vainly thought to myself that if they could cast someone like that then maybe someone like I could get into this you know how crass but you know don't worry about it but you know that was like the first time that I seriously thought of it as an attainable acting career but you know I still had no idea where to begin so I brought it up as I was talking to like a another cast member on a show that I was working on at the time and they told me about um AX Idol at Anime Expo because they had heard they had, they had gone to watch it, and they they heard that that person that won was getting work in anime and video games. So I went home, and I looked it up, and I actually signed up, and I scoured all the anime that I had watched up to that point to find a monologue and got it ready and competed. And I was lucky enough to make it as a finalist, and I have been working since then. So... Yeah, that's how I became, or how I got into voice acting. I think that was your question. I'm going to f- pretend that it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, it was. But I understand where you're coming from. You know, a lot of um, people, when they're getting into it, they'll see someone in here. It's like, hey, if I if they can do it, then I can do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you don't need to worry <laughs> about that a lot of. So, yeah, um, how was it like recording for Sachi from Sword Art Online, since Sword Art Online has now become a really big and popular modern anime right now, and especially since Sachi is kind of, like, known for being having one of the most sadder and most depressing episodes of Sword Art Online. So how, how, was, that, um, how, how was that experience for you? When I first tried out for Sachi, um, I had already seen the series as it was coming out, like on Crunchyroll. And so I was already familiar with the series. And so I was really excited to audition for her. And eventually I was cast as her. And um, I felt like it, like I had an important role to play, especially in Kirito's um, journey. So I, I really liked her character a lot because it, it kind of shows the the more vulnerable side to this game because at this point, I mean, I f- think a few people have died already in the game, but you don't really feel the full impact of it as much as um, you do with Sachi. So I really liked her a lot because she was very, um, very kind and sweet and like very forgiving in knowing that, you know, perhaps one day that, you know, she might die in some way and that, she wants Kirito to know that, you know, it's 
if it, even if it happens, she she is all right with it, and that she wants him to continue to live on and to you know put an end to it, you know, bring justice to to whoever did this. So yes, it was definitely um, one of the bigger tear jerkers of the series, I might say. <laughs> <laughs> So from all, all the different forms of media to voice act, from video games, commercials, cartoons, and anime, do you have a more preferred medium to voice act in or one that's more comfortable for you? Or, Well, I feel like, at least with anime, it, you, you can get more of a a feel for, like, a character. You get, like, their, their journey from beginning to end um kind of the same with video games too but um i'm not sure which one i like more i think video games are kind of fun too because um at least i don't have to deal with like lip flaps because that's like the most annoying thing about doing um adr for anime yes i can only imagine (laughs) and um it's kind of fun doing all like the the attacks and stuff you're you're yelling out really cool attack names but um yeah i don't know I'm not really sure which one I like more. They're both fun. <laughs> so how is it like recording for a kind of like odd game like Hyper Dimension Neptuna since pr- pretty much you're playing personified characters of famous video game consoles? Like how how is it like playing for a, a, a type of game like that? Like recording for it? Um, I thought it was really cute actually. Like going through and um, when I was recording for it and like we would say names like oh this place is called game industry or like we're saying all these different um um different titles and all these different characters but usually um some some of the references i didn't really know and i had to rely on our director to explain um what they all stood for and what their purpose is in this game but um i thought it was fun it's a really cute game did you have any um, actors that you admired or inspired like heavily or respect and, and you respect them a lot that really and made you really want to do voice acting today or helps you to try to develop your own style of acting? I really do admire a lot of voice actors. I mean, it's more like in passing when I'm watching something and I'm like, oh, well, that person is really good at that. And I, it's more like when I... I'm watching something and I afterwards I kind of think about the way they interpreted that character and like why is this moment working what did they um I, I always try to think what were they thinking when they were performing this scene or saying that line so that maybe perhaps like in the future I could fe- uh, I could kind of use that in my own work so um I don't know if that entirely made sense because <laughs> it's more of like um it's more of an internal thing where you kind of where where when you're really impressed with like work then you kind of just want to you know find out why it works and then just kind of put that in your pocket and use it later <laughs> do you have any tips for up-and-coming and inspiring voice actors well first of all you know you you really should take classes and get training as many people say um you know pay attention to your peers and your classmates as well, and to all the media that's around you because you can learn from them what works and what doesn't work. You know, if you listen to a commercial and you feel like it's really fake or they're really trying to sell you something, then you know that it's not working because it's taking you out of it. Whereas if you're listening to it and you feel like you want to buy this product, then maybe there's something about that performance that's really working. Um, And besides that aspect of it, um, you should also make sure that you are physically and mentally and um, financially prepared because, um, you know, you obviously need your your health and your voice to work. If you're, like, congested or, like, coughing and stuff, you're going to be sent home because as an actor, your body is your instrument. And uh, I say be mentally and emotionally prepared because there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. You know, sometimes it feels like, Things are going really slow and sometimes you'll be landing a lot of roles when suddenly you're auditioning forever and ever and ever and not getting any work. I mean, you'll 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 need like a, a strong support group like friends or like other actors to kind of keep your spirits up. You know, it's not a career for somebody that's really weak hearted. Um, 
like, you know, I, I don't even get a lot of things that I audition for and it can be really frustrating, but you can't just beat yourself up over it. You know, like there's, um, there's been an instance where I was cast as a character and I recorded three episodes for it before the producers felt like I wasn't the right cat, uh, right fit and they recast me. And so something like that can really hit your ego hard and you really need to be able to distance yourself and understand that it may not have anything to do with your acting ability, but maybe something else. And so you need to learn how to channel this disappointment into positive energy and like train yourself and get better and like take more classes or workshops. And, you know, even now I still take classes all the time and, you know, those classes are expensive. So you'll want to make sure that you have enough money saved up for these things. Um, and if you're not located in like Los Angeles or wherever it is that you need to work in voiceover, moving can be really expensive too. So um, you need to make sure that you're prepared for it because it, it all takes time too. And um, oh, I, um, one last thing. Uh, an actor teacher once told me, you should write down your goals and what is the one thing that you really want to do and be really specific? Like, I want to be in a fighting game or I want to do anime or work for Disney or whatever it is. Write down your your goal. Write down your game plan as to how you want to work towards this goal. And then give yourself like 10 years to reach that goal. And I know it sounds ridiculous because when my teacher said that, I was like super shocked. But you know, like, you know, 10 years, but it's, it's a much more realistic time frame if you think about it. So, um, I guess that's what I would say to you. <laughs> oh, that's, that's some really, that's some really great advice. So, um, do you have any final thoughts? Um, well, Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, everyone that's uh, supported me in my voiceover career so far. You know, it's really great having fans of shows come up to me and geek out with me or share their favorite scenes. And it really makes each project feel more complete. And it's not about just, you know, doing the job and then moving on. But it's kind of cool having it actually come back and seeing how my work is connecting with other people out there. So it's, you know, it's really priceless. <laughs> All right. It was an honor having you on the show. Thank you for having me.